Today we're going to continue our study in 1 John, looking at chapter 2, verses 7 through 11 specifically. In the last video, we went through verses 1 through 6, and before that, we went through the entire first chapter. So if you missed any of those videos, they are available on YouTube or our Patreon page. So you can go check those out before watching this one, uh, so you can get caught up to speed. But in today's video, in 1 John chapter 2, 7-11, through 11, he's giving us the new commandment, talking about the commandment of love and loving one another. And I just want to say, I woke up this morning and I always scroll over. The first thing I do on my page here, uh, or on my phone, is I scroll over and look at the verse of the day by you version. And the verse of the day is Galatians 5.14. It says, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I love when that happens. I love when uh, it's on topic with what we are talking about. I feel like that's just confirmation from the Lord that this is the message that I need to share today. So we're talking about loving our brother today from 1 John 2, 7 through 11. I'm also going to tell you guys, there's been some gremlins in the tech gear today. Man, uh, my computer didn't want to come on. And then once I got my computer on, which I have a very nice computer, I've invested a lot into it. Uh, that shouldn't be happening. So once I get it on, my stream deck is all jacked up, which is where I have all my buttons to be able to put the Bible on the screen. That was completely wiped out for no apparent reason, so I'm just like, oh my gosh. So anyway, we made it here, and we're going to get through First John 2, 7 through 11. Yesterday was rough as well when I did this on the page. It was like somebody shot me in the neck with a horse tranquilizer, and I'm just sitting there like, man, I can't hardly get through this today. So you ever have a day like that? You ever just feel like, man, your legs are in mud and you just can't seem to get through it or just all these little things just start happening that just, you know, frustrate you. So anyway. We're here, we made it, we got it on the screen, and we're going to learn about and talk about loving our brothers. So let's read through the text and then we'll break it down. 1 John 2, 7 through 11. He says, Beloved, I'm writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is the new commandment that I'm writing you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he's in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling, or in it there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Okay, so what is this new commandment? He doesn't explicitly say it right here, but let's look at this. He says, I'm writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you've had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard, but at the same time, it is a new commandment that I'm writing you. So what is he talking about? What is John referring to here? He's likely referring to what Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 34, when he says he's giving them a new commandment. He says it right here. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. Okay, so here's the old commandment, that they love one another. This is what they've had. They grew up learning this. That's why he says you've had this from the beginning. The commandment, the old commandment is the word that you have heard. They heard the law. They got taught this. But Jesus comes and gives them the same commandment, but he adds to it this. Just as I have loved you, you're also to love one another. So he is to be the example of love. If you recall in the Sermon on the Mount, which we can pull it up here, uh, Jesus teaches them because they were selective about who they wanted to love, right? So in, in verse 43 through 48, he says, You've heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? So what's the point in just loving the people that love us back? Are you not doing every are you not acting just as the world acts? So he says, Do not even the tax collectors do the same, or do not even the Gentiles do the same if we only love those who love us. So Jesus is delivering this commandment and saying, I have given you the example. This is how you are to love one another. And remember in context what he's just done. He's just washed the disciples' feet. He just got down, wrapped that 
his uh, garment around his waist. And this uh, whole passage, y'all, is so special to me. Every time I read it, I just envision this happening, and it just really moves my heart. It's so precious. Uh, the Son of God, that uh, the God of all things would humble himself into human form and come as a man, not to be served, but to serve. So here's the commandment that he gives to us, that we should love one another just as he has loved us. You're also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now, I want to quickly say this right here. Jesus does not say that all people will know that you are my disciples because you have the biggest church, because you preach the best sermons, or you're such a great teacher, or because you are the best evangelist or prophet or apostle or whatever. He also does not say it's because you prophesy correctly or because you cast out demons or because you can heal people or because you operate in the gifts of the spirit now y'all i believe the gifts of the spirit are absolutely for today the lord uses me in that way he uses a lot of you in that way and i believe the gifts are alive and active and it's a thing okay so i'm not negating that at all but that's not what jesus said would be the sign to the world that we belong to him He says, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Who's he talking about? Each other as the body of Christ. Yes, the world. Yes, the people. And we're going to define love here in just a moment. But he's talking about we've got to love each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. So this is the new commandment that John is talking about. It's an old commandment to love one another, but at the same time, it's new because we're doing it according to the way Jesus walked, to the, according to the example of Jesus's life, okay? So verse 8, he says, at the same time, it is a new commandment that I'm writing you, which we just discussed, which is true in him and in you, if you're a believer in Jesus, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. God is the true light. He's been from the beginning. He was not created. He's the one who is and was and is to come. He's also talking about the the light of the gospel. Paul talks about this in 2 Corinthians 4, the light of the gospel, right? Wherever the gospel is presented, wherever Jesus comes, wherever the Spirit of God comes, there is liberty and darkness has to pass away. We can look at John chapter 3 where he talks about, and this is the judgment that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. John talks about that, light and darkness, if you want to go read more on that, but he is the true light. It's the true light of the gospel that's been shining from the very beginning. And whenever it's present, darkness must pass away. So he goes on and says, whoever says he's in the light but hates his brother is still in darkness, right? These things contradict. You can't say that you're in the light, but then your actions actually prove that you're still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother, whoever actually loves his brother, whoever is in Christ abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling, or in it, talking about in the light, there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Now, when it talks about blinded here, in the Greek, this word is used three times in the New Testament. And it's always talking about non-believers. It's referencing non-believers. It's in John chapter 12, and it's in 2 Corinthians 4 right here, where he says, In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So who's the God of this world? Satan, the darkness, has blinded their eyes so that they won't see or hear the gospel correctly. That's what he's talking about here. Now remember the context. He's likely talking about these false teachers, these false prophets. He's got them in mind, right, when he's telling this to the Christians that he's writing to. How do we know he's writing to Christians? Right here. My little children. Also, the previous chapter tells us, by the way, John uses the word us when he's saying, um, if we say we have not sinned, right? Okay, so he includes himself in that group of believers. So John challenges them, this group of believers here in verses one through six, according to their morality and behavior. If you're truly in Christ and Christ is in, Christ is in you, and if you know him, then you'll keep his commandments. This is a fruit of your salvation. And 
And now he's challenging according to how we love and treat one another. And he's saying these false prophets, false teachers have come in. They say they're in the light, but they hate one another. They hate the brothers, okay? Just like he says up here, the ones that say, I know him, but doesn't keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. It's how we can spot the counterfeits. But at the same time, John is writing to Christians, right? I'm, I'm driving this point home. He's talking about how we treat our brothers. So while he's warning them about these false teachers and preachers, about these false prophets who are preaching a different gospel, he's challenging the existing believers, that would be you and me, and this is how we can apply this today, to search our hearts and say, hey, are we actually loving our brother and abiding in the light? We can do a heart check here and say, hey, am I loving my brothers and sisters in Christ? So many people say, I love God, but they treat their brothers and sisters so poorly. They treat the body of Christ so poorly, and they do it often in the name of God. Say, well, that's just how it is, or somebody's got to tell them the truth, or somebody's got to do that, but is that actually loving? What does the Bible say about love? What are the characteristics of love? We know it's Jesus' life. We know we have that example, and we can read that in the Gospels. But Paul writes about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the way of love. And this is what I want to get to. Are we loving our brothers and sisters in Christ according to Scripture, according to what the Bible says? If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but I have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clinging cymbal. If I have all prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. What's he talking about here? He's talking about spiritual gifts. Remember in John 13, 35, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And I said it wasn't the spiritual gifts. That's what Paul is saying right here. You can have all the spiritual gifts, but if you don't have love, you have nothing. If I give away all that I have, if you tithe the most in your church, if you're the most charitable, per charitable person, you're the most generous person, you give away 90% of your income, whatever it is, you're so nice, you're so kind. If you deliver up your body to be burned, you even go down, you give your life, you're a martyr. You go down in the glorious flames of martyrdom in front of the whole world but you don't have love, you gain nothing. Mm. This makes me think of Matthew chapter 6, where he says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. And he says in other passages, that is your reward, the cheers that you get from men, the claps that you get, the people saying, wow, look at all they gave. Wow, look how spiritual they are. Wow, look how holy they are. Wow, look how awesome they are. Look at all they're doing for the kingdom of God. But if you're not doing it out of love, you gain nothing. I hope we're hearing this. I hope we will study this. And then he goes on to say what love is and what love is not. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by Him. The Word of God is the truth. Love has to be given, walked out, shown. We have to abide in it according to biblical parameters, not the world's standards. The world has all kinds of standards for love. Love is love. Love is accepting me just how I am and the way I want to live my life, even if I am walking off a cliff, even if I am walking into a burning house. The world's definition of love is so twisted up and jacked up. We got to stay within the biblical parameters of love. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. How do we know what's wrongdoing? The word of God, but it rejoices with truth. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things and it endures all things. Love never ends. 
My friends, John is challenging us here. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light. And this is according to biblical love, according to the way that Christ loved them. Just as I have loved you. And Jesus washed feet. He said, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. I mean, can we just take a minute to think about that? Our Savior washed feet. There's something about this story that every time I read it, it hits something deep inside of me that the God, the creator of all things, the God of the universe would humble himself to human form, even down to washing people's feet. And then he would go and be mocked, scoffed, beaten, bruised, murdered on a cross in front of everybody, completely humiliated. He lowered himself for you and I. There's no greater love than one that would lay down his life for his friend. But the version of love we get pitched today in modern American and Western Christianity is our own cultural definition of love. It is not the love of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It is not the love that Jesus led with. It's not the love of the Bible. So many people want to be served. My friends, culture has influenced the church more than the church has influenced culture. May we love according to the life of our Savior and follow the example of Jesus himself. Too many people want to be served. Culture says you deserve to be served. You should be served. Get what's yours. You got to hustle or you're not going to get what's yours. But Jesus says, whoever loves his life will lose it. But whoever will lose his life for my name's sake will find it. We are called to pick up our cross daily and follow him. We crucify ourselves daily. It's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. We are crucified with Christ. We live to serve others. Lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ. And John reminds us in 1 John chapter 2, whoever loves his brother according to these standards abides in the light. And in him there is no cause for stumbling. Guys, all kinds of false teachers and false preachers and false prophets and false leaders are going to arise. Jesus warns us about it in Matthew chapter 24. He's going to say, many are going to come and say, I am the Christ, but do not be led astray. All the world religions have a version of Jesus. Culture has a version of Jesus. Various movements have a version of Jesus, and they all have their own versions of love. But we have to stick to God's word and what it says. This is creeping into the church. People are being tempted and wooed away by success and money and influence. When Jesus says, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. May we love just as he loved us. This is the call to the body of Christ. This is what John is challenging them with in 1 John 2, 7 through 11. There's so much more that we could go into on this topic, but I'm going to cut it off here for today. Does this mean that the love of the Bible means that we're silent? Does it mean that we're blindly accepting? Does it mean that we don't speak up when we see something wrong? No, that's not what it means at all. If I see a family member, a loved one, somebody I care about, or any of you, if I see them walking off a cliff or walking into a burning house, I'm going to speak up. But it's about the motivation, the intention of your heart. God is looking at the heart. Am I doing it to elevate myself? To say, aha, I'm right to wag my finger, to build my own kingdom, to attract people to me. Or is it because I care about his heart and care about the truth and care about his word and care about the condition of your soul? That is godly motivation. That is godly love. Hebrews 12 talks about the correction of God. He disciplines the ones that he loves. 
In fact, if we don't experience the discipline of the Lord, it says we're not legitimate sons or daughters of God, so that all works together, but there's a godly way that we do it. And that is the call in this message today. Are we loving our brothers and sisters in Christ according to God's word? Guys, I deal with this all the time. Inevitably, as you get deeper into scripture, as you grow closer to the Lord and the person of Jesus, and you become more engulfed in truth, inevitably, you begin to see so much more error all around you. It, it exposes the counterfeits all around you. It exposes bad and false doctrine all around you. So my prayer every day is, God, remove the plank from my eye before I ever say anything about the speck in my brother's eye. But in all things, I would intercede and pray for the body of Christ, pray for you, pray for the church, pray for our leaders. We got to be in prayer and pray for one another and love one another according to what scripture says. I could go on and on about this, but I'm going to cut it off right here today. And I hope this helps you. I hope this blesses you. And may this serve as a heart check for us all today, that we would love others according to the example of Jesus Christ. If you enjoy and appreciate what we're doing here at Glasshouse TV and you want to support the channel financially on a monthly basis, you can do that on our Patreon page. However, it is free to sign up and join the page. I do put out content over there that is unique and exclusive to Patreon, but that is free and available to everybody. So you don't have to donate, but all donations are appreciated but never required. Or if you want to give a one-time donation, you can do that with the links in the description below as well. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would certainly appreciate it and love to have you here. It helps the channel grow and I ask you to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button and that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people. But anyway, thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next one.